<clears throat> I have a piece of loose hair on my face. I can feel it and it's driving me crazy. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? We're so happy to be with you as always. It is, I can't believe it's Thursday, mid-May already. Like it's, it's things are, it's flying. Like where did the time go? I just don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, we're running a little late this morning. I had technical issues today, so having a hard time getting everything running this morning. I had to restart my machine in the middle of, oh, I was supposed to go live two minutes ago because this is not working. Okay, so how is everybody on this Thursday? We all know I'm tired, but that's because I stayed up until midnight reading a book and that was like way past my bedtime. So, <laughs> so were you reading a good book, Gina? You know, I was actually kind of disappointed in it. It was good. I wanted to know what happened, but I, uh, and it was, but I still like, I was like, I'm going to finish it. This was a book that people have been ranting and raving about, but I just don't think I'm ever going to get on board with this author and her style. I think that that's mainly my thing. Yeah. Think she, like, I think that's the problem because she tries to write like, I mean her, like, so she's very creative and like, this style like it's really cool like the format that she writes the books in it's just the storylines just like it's her character development and kind of the way she's writing it it doesn't necessarily land mm, I don't like, like when that happens yeah it's not like but I guess if you look at like the format that she's written the book in it makes sense but it's still like uh, Just not your thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's, for me, it was like, I didn't know the character enough to have what happened happen in it for me to be like, oh my God, it to be totally shocking. It was more to me like, kind of saw that coming. Yeah, I don't like when that happens. <laughs> yeah, I don't either, but it was still, it was still good. So I'm on track for my reading two to three books this month. So I've already read, that's the second one. So I'm just keeping with my goals, doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't read very much. I don't have time. I listen to books, except for I'm even so far behind on that because I've been creating so much content lately for websites. So exciting things for us. We had DG Marketing, the new website went up on Saturday or Sunday. Um, good morning, Sharon. And we have the boss girl that's going to go live hopefully by hopefully by Monday or Tuesday, because there's no way I'm going to get that done by tomorrow. Um, and then we have the RBB morning show that will also be going live. Uh, yeah, how on earth do you have time to read? I really don't. That's part of my problem. Uh, and then we have the RBB morning show that will be going live uh, midweek and week, end of next week. Uh, and then our sister partners, uh, we have their websites are, that I've got to write content for it that'll be going live in the next two weeks. And so uh, that's where I live is in writing website content world right now, as well as I've been writing content for my client Kitterbug Creations. She's off on vacation in beautiful Scotland. I'm so jealous. And she, I've been handling some of her social media and getting her Pinterest started. And then we have another client, Mindy, from Freedom Promise that I've been writing a workbook for. Uh, she wrote most of the content, but I've been putting it all together. And then we have Nicole that I've been writing marketing strategy for. So Danielle spends all of her time lately writing content. That's what that comes down to. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> and Gina, we need to get Gina lots and lots of coffee today. Yeah, I made a boo-boo. I don't, I don't do that normally. <laughs> So this morning we had, okay, so crazy question. In the day. We're getting, people are starting to ask us some fun questions. What is your dog? Which one? I'm like, that's all they asked. They didn't qualify. So Gina has two doggies. So Gina, what are your doggies? I have a long haired chihuahua named Gizmo. Um, and he was my child that I brought into the marriage. He is eight. His birthday is Cinco de Mayo. No, it is not lost on me that my chihuahua's birthday is Cinco de Mayo. Um, and then the one that you probably hear right now, Bat. I can't, I can't see her snoring. 
that's Shiner. And she just turned 10 and she's a French bulldog. And my husband brought her into the marriage. But since I work from home, she's with me all the time. So she's kind of more my baby now. So those are my two. And they uh, currently have a ongoing war with the wildlife in my backyard, mainly the squirrels. Um, <laughs> Which is very, very amusing all day long, I will tell you. So, and then with Shiner, she snores and usually she has her face up against my uh, desk and she snores so hard, it will vibrate the desk. And you can it, it, is, it actually sounds like a lawnmower sitting against the desk some days. So it's yes. you can typically hear her. So she's laying right here right now snoring. So my puppy is, he is a Westie, uh, West Highland Terrier, Yorkie mix. Uh, he is a little creamy white guy. And when I say the little, he's smaller than most cats. He only weighs about eight pounds. Uh, and he is seven years old. And we rescued him when we came back from Africa. And he is our little cuddle boy. He is sweet and kissy and just a little, you will often, I actually had to change out my office chair because he would get behind my me in my office chair. Um, right now you can't see him because he is literally laying on my feet. So that's usually where he is. He's attached to me and touching me in some way or barking at the bunnies out in the backyard, which Gina can attest gets very, very loud, very, very quickly. Very funny. So Danielle's dog is super sweet, really cuddly. And then mine, there's no shortage of attitude in this house. <sighs> well, we had, we had days where we had attitude. What, like one day last week, he was barking at me and just mouthy. He, yeah, funny. he got he got lippy all of a sudden and we still don't know what happened. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. So that's our crazy question of the day. Our next question is, uh, now I just totally lost what I was going to say. Oh, how do you start a business? What is the order that you should start a business in? So we have, and we will be releasing it next month. Um, yeah, with our a really comprehensive free workbook. We have a really comprehensive free workbook that will be coming out. And it's called the Business Startup Workbook. workbook. Uh, we have to redesign and everything. We're in the middle of rebranding everything for our new website and all of that. So we really go through what you're actually selling, who your ideal custom, customer is, your mission statement, how to create your mission statement, what does your company really do? And often, especially for those of us that are service providers, we think we offer one set of services when you're really offering a whole lot more to your clients. So we really take you through that process. But we also take you through the, you need a contract. You need your branding. You need visual branding. You need your Facebook setup, your Instagram setup, and and, ha and, and some stuff. Basic okay. client management. We talk about that. We talk about a lot of the like important big girl stuff that you should be doing to like when you decide you want to start a business. Like we cover a lot. Oh, Sharon's asking a question. What part of Africa were you in? I love to hear those stories one day. So Africa. Uh, I spent a year as a missionary in Africa, my husband, my son, and I, and yes, we took our son with us. That was the craziest question we always got is, are you going to leave your son home? Yes, I'm going to leave my 12-year-old home. Yes, I, I, I'm just going to leave him home for a year. Yep, just going on his own. Yeah, that, I don't know why people kept asking us that. We were in the Republic of Congo, which you hear in the news, you hear about the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is either, it, it, it's not Democratic or a Republic. Um, so where we were was Zaire, uh, at one point, uh, it is French speaking Congo. The Belgians, uh, started it, took it over, took it over, I guess is the best way. To, and they got their independence in 1999 or something like that, except for, I, I, we did spend some time in Kinshasa that is in the other Congo. We were actually, we flew into Brazzaville. And then uh, from Brazzaville, we were up in uh, where the, whatchamacallit, capital was, where the president was. And I put that in quotation marks because the president was actually the leader of the communist country. And then when it switched to, when it switched to being the Republic of Congo, he was voted in, again, all in quotation marks, and he was the president, and he's still the president um, after 
20 something years. So yeah, not so still the same thing. Um, and we were in Infondo and Infondo means land of bananas and they aren't kidding. There are about 40 varieties of bananas or something there. Um, we, we worked at a mission hospital. I love Congolese music. I still often am playing it. And I actually, um, we made some really good friends there and it's because cell phones are a thing. We actually get calls still from some of the Congolese uh, that my husband and I worked for. And we got a call. The problem is you get a call from this random weird number every once in a while. And you have to go from speaking English all of the time to launch into um, Lingala or French. And my French is terrible, let me tell you. Like, I, I learned how to shop in French and argue about pricing in French. That's about as far as I ever got. Uh, but Lingala, I speak okay when my brain is on. So we got a call about two weeks ago from one of the guys my husband um, worked with. And it took us about five minutes to be able to get our heads back in Lingala world and we're able to talk to them a bit. And we actually are, I speak Lingala okay. Um, I spoke Lingala a lot better when I lived there, <laughs> um, but we've been home 10 years now. So I don't get to practice too often. However, I do get to practice here and there. Um, and we do plan on in the next two years to go back to uh, that area of Congo and do another mission trip. Uh, we plan to do a couple months. Uh, we have friends that are there that uh, just opened up an eye surgery clinic. Uh, and they're going to, in two years, they're going to need help building out their whole electrical infrastructure and as well as teaching women uh, how to cook properly, how to do nutrition and all, which is what I did while we were there. So. Um, I will be doing some classes and stuff. So I, I do need to brush up on my Lingala somewhere in a box somewhere. I have CDs to, that I use to learn Lingala in the first place. I've got to dig those back out and start listening to them often. So my husband was maintenance and building. So he built things and everything. He fixed tractors and, and trucks and x-ray machine. When I say he fixed everything, he fixed everything. Um, built houses, built all kinds of stuff. Um, I was there to help homeschool another missionary family, help homeschool all their children. And I also did communications and organization. So because my background is in tech, I could handle the internet going out and fixing <laughs> the satellite feed all the time and all of those things, as well as communicating with teams that were coming on, on sites, uh, basically project managing for a huge team. We had teams of two come in from like France. And then we also had a team of 50 college students come in from Liberty University and we had to organize all of the things that that meant and give them tours and teach them about life. I mean, they're only there for like three weeks, four weeks. And you have to immerse them into Congolese life as quickly as possible. So we did teaching them how to cook things over fire, you know, all of that, all of the fun stuff that goes with that, especially with college students, you have to give them the fun side of life because believe me, living there was not fun all the time. We actually got stuck in the middle of the civil war while we were there and almost had to be evacuated out. I have some terrible stories, amazing stories, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I have awesome pictures. At some point, Sharon, I will point you to the folder on my uh, Facebook so you can go through all the pictures and stuff. So um, that's, that's some crazy, a little bit of the crazy stuff. Oh, craziest story I have, Lingala. I was on the subway from Peekskill, New York, going into New York one day, and it was like god awful early, like 5.30 a.m., which meant I left here at midnight to get there at 5.30 a.m., and I'm sitting there, and there's this whole family, very, very noticeably African in, in how they were dressed, uh, getting on the train. Uh, I think I think they got on asinine or something like that and sat down. I mean, there were probably 20 of them and no, I'm not kidding. Um, and all were chatting with each other and I was half asleep on the train, which is stupid as a woman by themselves on the train, by the way, don't do that. Um, and it woke me up because I'm like, I was dreaming I was in Africa because they were all speaking Lingala behind me. And they were trying to figure out how to get to Grand Central Station. And I woke up and I was like, wait, I am hearing Lingala. 
<laughs> so I was actually, I spent the rest of the 45 minute train ride speaking with them and I ended up showing them how to get some places in New York City. And I was actually able, some of them spoke a little English, um, but not great. They spoke great French, which my French is terrible and they were picking on me terribly because I could speak Lingala, but couldn't speak French, which is not usually they speak both. Uh, so it was, it was an interesting day because I got to spend quite a bit of time and it was fun for me because I was literally dreaming about being in Africa. <laughs> so having them get on the train with me was kind of fun. Um, and that happens are often enough in New York City that I hear some of that. And I loved my time in Africa. It was terrifying. It was amazing. It was the greatest, probably about the greatest year of my life. And my son and my husband, I'll say the same thing. So, uh, ooh, I've been asked to babysit next weekend. And my sister is asking me if I could take my morning show off next Friday. Can I take the morning show off next Friday? I won't. I'll do it in the car. So Gina, next Friday, can yell at me for not having my hands on the wheel while we drive, while I drive. Yay, because my nerves love that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Questions this morning. Uh, I do have a question from someone regarding um, Instagram. Why is Instagram so important for your business? It's visual. Gonna, it's visual, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's not important for every business. I have clients that are not on Instagram um, and nor do they need to be because that's not where their clients are. So Instagram is not a necessity for your business. Not in any way. People like don't not like every, every platform is not a necessity for your business. There are some like, like Danielle and I were talking the other day, like I was thinking of maybe reviving my Twitter account because I have lots of thoughts. So I was like, maybe I could just post my unfiltered thoughts there. And then we decided that it, you know, it wouldn't work for, it would, it wouldn't work for the customer base that or it wouldn't really do anything for us other than me just getting to be snarky on the internet. And like, what good does that do anybody? Right. So you thought like not every, I'm just going to preface what Danielle is saying with not every single platform is going to be a fit for your business. It, it just, it's not, um, what kind of businesses need IG? It, there is no exact answer to that, Sharon. Um, there is, it really depends on where your clients are. Do your clients hang out there? Uh, and things that affect that is type of industry you're in. If you're in the tech industry, IG is not the place for you. I did not use Instagram until about, I had an Instagram account, but didn't really use it until about two years ago. Because in the tech world, nobody uses IG. Now, my Twitter account was huge because that's where we all hung out and that's where we communicated at. Um, and then other people LinkedIn does not make sense for some small businesses because their ideal clients aren't there. So it really depends on where your customers are, um, what your age group is of your customers. Because if your customers are over the age of like 45-ish, chances are Instagram is not necessarily your ideal place to be. Um, but the same goes for everything except for Pinterest. Pinterest, again, one, not social media, two, second biggest search engine in the world. Pinterest, everybody needs to be on there. My husband now searches Pinterest for motorcycle parts and car parts and woodworking stuff. So everybody's there. I have a cigar client. They make custom cigars and sell custom cigars that's on IG or uh, Pinterest. So it Pinterest is one of those, one is social media, like I said, but uh, it's, it's a necessity for pretty much everybody now. Um, if you're not there, especially if you're in any industry that deals with women, you are stupid. Just being honest, stupid. You are missing out on so much. Get on Pinterest. It is a necessity. Um, IG, not a necessity. Facebook business page, necessity because it becomes your like your phone book entry. <laughs> Honestly, it's like your yellow pages page. It, it, it really is. Um, sometimes because people are leaving you reviews. Yeah, so I have a client that none of her clients are on Facebook, except for she keeps getting cut. Uh, her clients find her from Facebook because they search online, find her Facebook page, and that leads them to her. Um, so they aren't looking for her even on Facebook, and Google leads them to her Facebook page. So it, it is important to um, make sure that your Facebook business page is very active. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean you should be sinking a ton of time into that either. Just something consistently. Um, next question I have is Pinterest. Are you guys going to offer a full Pinterest training? So yes, there will be, eventually there will be a full Pinterest training with probably a panel of experts and a full course in our membership. Uh, that's probably a good six months, eight months out before that happens, uh, as we're only going to be releasing one really good deep dive course a month. So you will be able to find it over there. Um, some of those things will also make it to our normal shop here and there. So kind of watch our shop for those things um, because... We'll just randomly once in a while release something from our membership into the shop for people to buy um, here and there. But that that is a ways off. Now my team is tomorrow, we are doing a big deep dive into Pinterest and I'm teaching my team some more Pinterest strategies because I can't be the only Pinterest expert on our team anymore. Good morning, Kara. <laughs> Uh, I understand being late. I had a hard time even getting lo logged on this morning. So, um, so Pinterest is essential, but it, that type of training is one. There are some, don't take, um, don't take every freebie training out there for Pinterest. Most of them suck. Uh, Sharon is guessing what's the link for the shop. It's be boss girl slash shop. And there are some workbooks in there and things right now. Um, there's only about 20 or so in there right now, I think. Uh, and those will remain even when our new website comes up. We are leaving those workbooks there. However, we have some bundles that are available right now that will not be any longer once we move over to the new shop because uh, some of those bundles are going to become part of our course material for our membership. Um, so those are only available probably for the next week, mostly because I'm too lazy to go in there and remove them when I have to redo the site anyway. So. <clears throat> Just full honesty here, I, I'm just not taking the time to deal with it. <laughs> um, so next question I had this morning was Trello. Is it possible to do full project management in Trello? We've answered this, I think last week at one point, but we're gonna go, I'm gonna tell you right now, no. Trello is not project management. Gina. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to just be honest. It depends on what you think a project is. Will depend will depend on if Trello will work for project management. So for things like a website build, you know, really major, really big stuff like a funnel redesign. Um, I'm trying to think of some major things that would make like a, a course launch. Um, membership site launch. Um, things pro like that are more visual though. They're not real. They're more, they're more task management than they really are. And you need to be able to manipulate them a little more. Yeah. So the things like things like that, those major things, they're not going to work in Trello. The reason for that is because there are dependencies. There are, you know, multiple things. You need to be able to see a timeline there. There's so much that goes into it, Trello, but Trello may work for some people, but I just don't, I personally, just from my personal opinion, and I use Trello, we actually use Trello now very heavily um, for our task management and amongst the management team, we use it. We also use it, you know, as um, a library of resources also for our team. Like it is used over um, a DG over DG marketing and be boss girl. And uh, so not now, so now I will say I use it. I focus on using it personally. And for me, how this works is I use it a ton for um, creating content and being, uh, being able to manipulate the content. I find that that works best. <sighs> so but as far as I just for, just for major, major things, no, I, it does not work well for project management. Some people find a way to do it, um, and that's fine. It honestly all, do, I'm, you know what, I'm just going to say it like this, because it does not matter what platform you are using that is going to determine whether or not that you're going to manage a project well or not. I know, we know somebody who uses the same software that we do, and they were the shittiest project manager I've ever come across. Sorry, I'm sleepy. I did not mean to swear. Excuse me, you guys. But it is true. I like their project management skills 
awful, like dropping the ball left and right with clients, constantly overwhelmed. And they use ClickUp, which is the exact same project management software that we use here. So it, does, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just going to throw it out there. My opinion, I'm of the opinion that ClickUp is better for major project management. Trello is better for task management. That is my opinion. That's what works for us over here. That is, but again, I say that is my opinion as an expert, but you... So, you so I, I'm, I'm going to temper this a little bit. So I, I, I come from project management world too. I'm an ex-project manager for major, like 5,000 step projects. N no, I'm not kidding. Um, and that's usually just phase one. <laughs> Uh, project management is anything that has task dependencies. So if you have a single task to do on a project or maybe five tasks to do. Yeah, like it depends Trello is probably project. fine. Trello will work fine for the project. But, size. but if you have a task that has 10 other tasks underneath it that have to be done before that task is done. And then th that task has, the next task has 20 tasks, but has to be done in a certain order. That's when you move to project management, like ClickUp, Asana, um, those types of things are way too complicated to deal with in Trello. But I, still think it, I agree with you, but I also still think that it's really important. I feel like this question comes up a lot because people are thinking that the software will determine whether or not they manage a project well or not. And I think but it's not the software. It's not the software. And I, I honestly think that that's the underlying question. And that's what I really want to address is it doesn't matter what software you're using. Just like people are constantly thinking they're going to sell more courses if they're on Kajabi or they're going to get more conversions if they're on lead pages or you know what I mean? Or, or they're going to get, you know, their funnels are going to work better and make them more money if they're on click funnels. It has absolutely nothing to do with the software that you're using and every bit to do with the strategy and your knowledge and, you know, it, how you're doing it. And that, that's, that's, re, that, that is the bottom line. So I'm going to read between the lines here. And the answer is it doesn't matter what software you're using. If you don't know, if you don't know or understand project management and how to do it well, it doesn't matter. Trello, ClickUp, Asana, it doesn't matter what you're in. You're going to host. Well, your it's also like those people that buy it. And Sharon, I do see your question and I will answer it momentarily. Uh, it, it's also like those people that buy 9,000 planners because this planner will get me organized. Nothing. Unless you are using it properly in dedicating yourself to using and creating those habits, nothing is going to be organized. Like Danielle and I don't use it. I don't care. I don't care, you know, how, you know, wonderful it is. You know, everybody loves the passion planner or the law of attraction planner or the Erin Condren life planner. And they all think that it's just completely changing their lives. And it's not the planner. It's not the planner. Like Danielle and I, neither one of us use a planner. Nope. Neither one of us. And we are organized and on top of our stuff and things are moving and we have a lot of moving parts and no balls are getting dropped over here. So, and we don't use a planner. No, I, I'm a huge fan of saying that I don't use a planner. I use the bullet journal system um, because I like to handwrite everything. And I use, I, I'm on the iPad Pro and I do use it on my, the t that type of system on my iPad um, still, but that's about as planner-ish as I get now. That being said, that being said, I have my own system that I use and I have a planner that I sell. You can find it in our shop uh, because I've designed it for those that have uh, organizational thought process issues. So I am ADHD. I understand that. I've done a lot of um, study and work on that. And also these are skills that I learned from ADHD experts and things like that. So, I mean, that that being said, I do believe in planning systems, um, not a planner. Not a I planner, mean. yeah. Like I have my own system as well that I think I need to sit down and- uh, uh, I, And she's gonna have to. Head. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get it out of my head. Uh, so like, I, I, I have one as well. I'm gonna have to get it out of my head. But um, Sherry, to answer your question, um, so social media content calendar, a project or a task. Um, tasks, I would think those are tasks. And, and that comes down to the social media content. It really, really is good to um, do things in Trello for social media content. Let's go it back really, to the definition of a project. A yeah. project is uh, something that has a definitive beginning and an end. Like task, operational stuff is anything that is ongoing. So a social media content calendar is ongoing. So therefore you would categorize it as a task. So if you run, if you, if you always run it through that filter, does this have a definitive beginning and end 
or is this an ongoing thing? That will usually help you differentiate between the two. Yep. Typically. Typically, so yes. There's always a gray area. There's always an exception to the rule, but that is a really good rule of thumb. Yeah. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And I, like I said, when it comes to the social media stuff, I really have found Trello to be one of your best, best management pieces of that. I mean, I use it in so many ways. Uh, I drive, I think I drive Gina a little nuts because I will tend to go to Trello for laying out my thought processes and mapping things out before, even if I know that it is actually a full on project management thing because I need to be able to move things around because my brain bounces so many places that I don't think in order. So <laughs> I need Trello so I can be able to move things around so I can get it all in order and then I can organize it and put it in, in ClickUp. So there is, there are a lot of uses for Trello. I, I suggest it to a lot of my ADHD clients for their mind mapping um because it really works very very well because it's so visual and easy to manipulate and that's part of it is it's super easy to manipulate um there's a lot of other mind mapping things that are out there but they're not you can't move things around easily um but again true project management click up social media project management trello because social media is so weird when and, it comes and, to organizing those, that, those things and again it does not matter what software you're using that will determine how well you're going to do with this. Like if they're there, we've managed social media out of ClickUp. We've managed it out of Asana. We've put it in all different kinds of places. Like, and it does, it, it did just fine, no matter where it was. It absolutely does not matter what the software is. What That's matters true. is you need to, if you like, if you're going to be doing your own project management, you need to learn about project management and how to be a project manager. Also processes and procedures, understanding how important processes, standard operating procedures are for your business. I know that you guys hear us say that all the time, but it is so, so, so important. So like, let's give, let me give you an example of how a process and procedure will save your life. So let's say that you are getting your social media content creation down to a science and you did something like, and it worked amazing. And then you go to sit down and you don't remember what you did. Had you sat down like in that moment when you realized how well it worked and documented what it was that you did. Now you have a standard operating procedure of what you're doing that you can go back and reference when you're like, okay, what did I do here? What did I do there? And from there you can create, you can even create like template out like in whatever like so or software you're using to organize your projects. You can manage a project out of a spreadsheet, you guys. Like, I mean, it's not, it's, it's really, it, again, like I say, it does not matter. It's all, it all matters on how you use it and how well you're managing it. So and then you can, to actually attach that document to wherever it is that you've shelled out your steps in your process, because that's the other thing is you should be creating, like if you have something that you're repeating every time, so like a content calendar for social media, you should have a template that you have, that you've got down to a science that you just copy over each time for every new client that you've got coming in. And that's how standard operating procedures save your life is it's about, it's about, taking your process and what you're doing and getting it out of your head and saving yourself some steps and saving yourself some brain power. And then this will also allow you to scale up faster because you've documented what you do. So it makes it a lot easier to pass off. Um, that, that, that's how they save your life. But the main way that they save, save your skin is when you're refining your process and it finally clicks, you've got it documented. So the next time you go to do it, you can remember what you did. Like, that's really what it is. You can remember what you did. It's kind of like, where did I park my car in the airport? And, you know, you have to take a little ticket and they tell you to write where you are on the back of the ticket so that you can find your car when you get back from wherever you, wherever you were. Same concept. Absolutely the same concept. But um, maybe one day I'll explain to you guys how you can manage a project out of a spreadsheet. Because I feel like a lot of people would really benefit from starting there 
with project management, like learning how to manage their project out of something as basic as a spreadsheet before they start, before they choose the software of their choice to manage a project out of. I think that would be a really good exercise. I already do that one day in the membership. That's probably really, really good. Yeah, I may do that. What do you guys think? Would you guys like that? Oh, Sarah joined us. I didn't notice Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Popped up on my thing. So we are, well, we're just about at our time today. So those that have more questions, just ask below. You can always ask follow-up questions on the video whenever you get around to watching it. Let us know that you're watching it in replay. We really appreciate those that are watching. You can always watch over on our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, next time I swear I'll have taken a nap, you guys. <laughs> and I'm wide awake today, but partially because my son bought me this awesome espresso cold coffee drink thing last night. It was really, really, really good. I may or may not have had a whole entire 12 ounces of that this morning. So you're wired. Well, that and I went to bed really early last night and slept all night for the first time in like a few days. So we are on Thursday. So how are you having fun this week with your business? What is the coolest thing you've gotten to do this week? Who's the coolest person you've talked to? Tell us below. Remember to rise, become, and be everything in your business that you're looking for and reach those goals. Have a great day, everybody.